and then they did the first dialysis. And I was so I, I was so aware of the fact that the first ever time I did dialysis, I'd had that mild stroke and it had gone really badly. That mm -hmm. I thought, okay, it's ten years, ten years now since no more, um, more that I've had a problem. How is my body going to react to this dialysis? You know, yeah. so I was just saying my family's name. Uh, each of their names in my head so that I wouldn't lose focus. So I was <laughs> sitting there going, Di, Di, Diane, Maggie, Freddie, Benjamin, Benjamin, Freddie, Maggie, Diane, back and forth in my head so that I could just stay with the process. And I did that for three hours what? Until, until the dialysis was, was finished. And then it was the most amazing thing they finished. And they said, just close your eyes a little bit, have a nap. And I, and I, and I, and I closed my eyes a little bit. And then I woke up and one of our friends was in the room, was in, the, was in there, who she happens to work at the hospital, good friends of mine and Diane. And just seeing someone that you know mm. uh, was, was huge. I was like, okay, it's going to be fine. And that was kind of like, then I knew I'd be okay. And then, yeah, we still had a couple of hiccups along the way. My platelet count from that point went up very quickly, but then it dropped back down really badly. So at one stage it went up to around 200 and... 80,000, I think it was. And then over a weekend, it dropped to 4,000. Hmm, and what? then we just kind of like restart again, you know? And, um, and then that was all going okay. And, and, you know, I was able to like WhatsApp people and talk to people. And, and my attitude in the hospital was just, I'd read that Bruce Lipton book, The Biology of Belief. And my attitude was just, just stay happy. Just mm -hmm. stay happy. So um, this is where I must say to you guys, um, I listen to your guys' podcast all the time and because it's just such a happy, you guys create such a happy podcast, such a, your conversations are always so happy and, and it was so positive. And so when I do my walks in the mornings in the, in the passageway, I'd listen to you guys and <laughs> I say, thank you so much because it, it was one of the things that helped me stay positive when it was, would have been really easy to, to get down and negative. And um, so it was awesome. Um, and uh, so you know, my thing was just stay positive and pump, your body was full of those po that positive energy and, and those positive things in your blood. And, and, and so I'd be friendly to everyone and make my, my, I would, um, I started journaling and I was like, okay, so I'm going to do a write it forward journal. So I would write in the evening, i would write down what's going to happen tomorrow. And it would be like dialysis is going to go well. Uh, you're going to be friendly to everybody. You're going to be patient. You're not going to. You're not going to be. Um, you're not going to get impatient with anybody. Um, you. You. You know. You're going to make five people laugh, and you're going to make ten people smile, and you're going to. And you know, there was all these kind of things that I was like, I'm just going to try to be as positive and happy and friendly as I can because that's going to help me get through this thing. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, that's what I did. And then, um, and then I contracted a bacterial infection from a guy in the hospital and, uh, and it was, it was quite hectic. I was supposed to go home, uh, for, for a night, uh, and two days because they were like, listen, it'll be good for you to go home and spend a bit of time with your family and then come back and we'll see how you respond, um, mm. how your blood count is and everything. And then, uh, that it was supposed to be the Saturday that I was going to go home and the Friday night I did a dialysis treatment. It didn't go well. I was really uncomfortable. I was very hot and feverish and didn't feel good. And it took a long time. And then that night um, at about probably around, it was actually early in, in the morning, probably at one o'clock in the morning, I started getting cold shivers and, um, and, and, and sweating. And, and that lasted about 20 minutes. And I thought to myself, do I need to call a nurse? But then it went away. So I thought, okay, now I'm fine. And then the next morning at about six-ish, one of the nurses came to check my temperature. And my temperature was at 39.8 <laughs> degrees Celsius. And she's like, this is really high. And uh, I'm worried about this. And then I had like another shaking, cold fever, cold shakes and everything. But this time it was really bad. I was like, I couldn't stop shaking. Um, they had to give me an oxygen mask because I was battling to breathe. Um, and then what happened was they said to me, um, you were going to take you to ICU because the machines are better and it's just a precaution. You've got a bacterial infection, but it's just a precaution. Hmm. I phoned Diane and I said, listen, I'm, I'm not coming home, um, but they're sending me to ICU, but it's just a precaution that the machines are better. The hospital phoned Diane, told her the same thing. Hmm. And then um, 24 hours later, I was in a coma um, because they had to induce, induce, because the only thing they could do with this bacterial infection was heavily, heavily sedate me. And uh, then it was kind of up to me to to pull out of the coma. 
And so then I was in the ICU for about a month. Um, and that was quite a hectic, that was quite a hectic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Good Lord. And it was the touch and go. Is. Like it literally, you know, yeah. there was, there was moments where we were like, we're not too sure what's going to happen if he's going to make it. Yeah. I mean, there was five days where I was just under and no one knew when I was going to wake up. So yes. that, you know, that was, that was, it was, a, it was five days after that I, that I, that I came through. Cause basically what the doctors said to my family was he's, he's under now and it's up to him to come out, to wake up. Jeez. And, and so obviously I don't remember being under and, and, mm. Like this, this mark on my face is from is is apparently from um, tubes that I had in my nose, and then they had pipes down my throat. And because it was hot, uh, it actually burnt me on my because they had to lie me down. They had to lie me down on my on my stomach, and they had to change me all the time so the fluids in my lungs wouldn't mm. stay in one place and it would move around. Um, and yeah, so it was quite a. I don't remember too much. Um, I had, I hallucinated a lot. So like one time I, I, I dreamt or hallucinated that we were being attacked, that the hospital was being attacked by monkeys and wow. these kind of things happened. And there was one stage where I was basically having deja vu and everything was just repeating itself. So my oh, sisters wow. had visits, had come to visit from London and, um, they just kept walking in and I'd have the same conversation and one of them would walk out and the other one would walk in and then no the same one would walk in again and eventually i still remember i i, I had this little chalkboard that i could write stuff on so because i couldn't talk because i had these pipes down my throat and i had to write on this board if i wanted something if i needed to communicate something to the nurses and my sister alshandra um I, I, you know this was after like obviously this this there was no repetition it, it was just in my mind mm. and uh it's it's crazy and and i wrote down deja vu on <laughs> and i showed alshandra and she couldn't he, she couldn't read my handwriting and, <laughs> and then she could read it and then i tried it again and i wrote it and she could read it but she didn't know what deja vu was <laughs> <laughs> so she walked out of the room to to my folks and stuff and she was like i'm really confused i don't know what he was trying to tell me <laughs> and, uh, so yeah a couple of uh, you know it's good to look back and laugh at it now yes. and there was a stage where one of the, 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 the one of the main directors at the hospital got involved as well in terms of it, she was the one who was like, listen, he's got a he's got this bacterial infection. We need to get him to ICU. And if it wasn't for her, who knows what would happen? If they'd yes. let me go home, Jesus, I don't even want to know because I still said to the guy, so I've got a bit of a fever. You know, that's not going to going home is not going to do any harm. Hmm. And he's like, no, we can't let you go home. Thank God they didn't let me go home because who yeah. knows what would have happened. Um, but but even one of the things in ICU, uh, in the bed next to me, the guy died, and um, and they wheeled him out into the hallway and, and covered him and everything. And she came to visit me, and she saw this body lying in the hallway, and, oh. she, and she thought it was me, and oh, she started no. she started crying and everything. Oh, and uh, so yeah, these God. things happen. So it, but but you know when that happens, it kind of puts everything into perspective, and you're like, okay, it could still be worse, you know, and. Uh, Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold mountain range. Gotta be quick, so 